you know, it's it, it's hard to talk about, but as a as a patient, you you really feel stigmatized because there's a real separation between you and and the caregivers, and you you don't feel like yourself. You 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 know everything's taken away. Your cell phone is taken away. Your your shoes are taken away, and you're kind of left to kind of try and sort things out from from scratch. I think that mental health and substance use care is really about people. Our, our best work is done when we're in partnership with people. So if we aren't listening to the people that we're providing the services for, then we're really missing a huge opportunity to do that work better. I think it's really important to advocate for the patient. And I think the more information you get and more participation, I think you have better outcomes. At the very beginning of the initiative for uh, PFCC, and the entry to the inpatient, there was like a great big stop sign, you know, like beware as you go in here. So we took that down and now it's just this lovely tree and figures of people. It's a welcoming place. We no longer have time to visiting hours. It's, it's been, it's open visiting hours. Um, sometimes I've actually phoned family members up and had them come in to be present when medications are given. Lots of times just talking to the patient and the family member to implement a care plan. Well, PFCC looks like relationships to me. It's about changing the, the paradigm, I guess, from, from just being a patient who everything is done to and for to somebody who the, the care team works with. I think Vancouver Coastal Health really as an organization deserves credit for having a very robust community engagement team that developed a platform that we were able to build on in terms of our person and family centered care work within mental health and substance use. So they have uh, created what they call a community engagement advisory network and built a whole toolkit for how to help welcome and prepare people to work well and effectively within the organization as advisors to influence the work that we're doing. The biggest change that we've been able to uh, participate in is having our partner advisors at the table with us when we're making our changes for our programs. So we have them sitting on our panels with us when we're doing interviews. They give us information on everything from the way that we're structuring our care to the way that we design our forms and they give us feedback also on our physical space. So actually the space that we're in here was actually designed together with our partner advisors. We all went to a uh, fantastic person of family centered care uh, conference in Baltimore. When we would go into the, you know, hear somebody speak on some topic, we think, gee, we're actually already doing that. So uh, that was really, um, uh, really confirming that we were on the right track. It's made me more aware, I think, of my own practice and advocating for patients and their family members so that they feel valued and respected. I think the other piece is actually just very efficient. <laughs> if you're trying to do quality improvement in your organization, uh, it's just really practical to go straight to the people that you're delivering the care and services to and get their feedback right up front. I always feel like I, I'm part of the solution. I sat at a staff meeting and I've told the nurses and, and the, the folks there that, you know, even though when we're really sick, we don't say thank you and we don't show appreciation, it really makes a difference to us that we're treated well and that we're treated like people. And it, it just, it just made this lady break down and cry. And, you know, it really just goes to show that, that the people who are providing the care really do, really do care. And, you know, if they can see, if they can see the people that they're treating the way that they see themselves, I think that really makes a difference.